Alrighty guys, today we are continuing the age-old debate of difficulty in video games. It's casuals versus tryhards as we discuss dynamic difficulty in games. Dynamic difficulty adjustment is a form of game balancing that enables a game to automatically increase or lower its difficulty based on the player's performance. This means that playing better will cause the game to become more challenging. Likewise, dynamic difficulty allows the game to tone down its challenges if you're struggling to progress. Like I said, for some games it works, but I don't ever want to feel like the game is putting on the kid gloves because I'm going through a rough patch of gameplay. Hello fellow travelers and welcome to the Hard Light Network. Alrighty guys, today we are continuing the age-old debate of difficulty in video games. It's casuals versus tryhards as we discuss dynamic difficulty in games. We've got a bit of a lengthy discussion ahead of us guys, so we're going to get right into it. But first, if you can, please hit that like button, subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the content I've got coming up for you guys, and hit me with a comment down below. Of course, there is also a super thanks option down below if you wanted to go that extra mile. Now with all that algorithm voodoo out of the way, let's get right into this article. Today's article comes to us from How To Geek and is entitled, There's a better alternative to video game difficulty settings, but nobody uses it. Difficulty settings in video games aren't always perfect, and many games still struggle to provide options that aren't too easy or too difficult. While some games like Elden Ring and Monster Hunter Rise forego this choice altogether, there's a better approach to difficulty settings that too many developers are ignoring. Dynamic difficulty adjustment is a form of game balancing that enables a game to automatically increase or lower its difficulty based on the player's performance. This means that playing better will cause the game to become more challenging. Likewise, dynamic difficulty allows the game to tone down its challenges if you're struggling to progress. By using dynamic difficulty, games are able to adapt to a player's skill level, creating experiences that are accessible to casual gamers and challenging for a hardcore audience. Whereas many games are criticized for being either too easy or too unforgiving, Thing. Dynamic difficulty provides a way for everyone to enjoy the same title, regardless of whether they're looking for a tough-as-nails test of skill or a cozy game to relax with. When it comes to dynamic difficulty in video games, the titles that I tend to enjoy most on a personal basis are the ones that have it implemented secretly in the background. However, if the changes are too extreme over too short of a period of time, or if the game just ends up giving me a pop-up menu to change it to an easier difficulty after dying a few times, it really just comes across as condescending. Like I said, for some games it works, but I don't ever want to feel like the game is putting on the kid gloves because I'm going through a rough patch of gameplay. Personally speaking, I would rather have the sense of accomplishment and satisfaction of beating a genuinely tough enemy than knowing that the game pulled its punches for me to get past a particularly difficult area. I remember playing Sekiro Shadows Die Twice and being stuck on the corrupted monk at the Fountainhead Palace for nearly two weeks. For whatever reason, I just could not cope with his wide-swinging, windmill-sweeping attacks and it was pure rage bait. However, once I finally defeated him, I literally jumped out of my seat with pure excitement. And that feeling would have definitely been blunted if I had known that the game was handicapping itself after the fourth or fifth loss. Despite being only used in a small number of releases, dynamic difficulty adjustment has played a significant role in shaping some of the best video games of all time. One of the most famous examples of dynamic difficulty can be found in Resident Evil 4. The game features a hidden scoring system that is constantly increasing and decreasing based on your performance in combat. This score will prompt the game to alternate between difficulty scale that ranges from 1 to 10, with 1 being the easiest and 10 being the hardest. A standard playthrough begins at rank 6, however as you increase this difficulty by successfully killing enemies and avoiding attacks, your foes will become tougher, act more aggressively, and appear in larger numbers. Similarly, missing shots and repeatedly dying will lower your difficulty rank. Resident Evil 4 also demonstrates how dynamic difficulty and traditional difficulty settings aren't mutually exclusive. Along with the standard difficulty option, all versions of the game include an unlockable professional mode that locks in the difficulty at rank 10. Later ports introduced a quote easy mode which features a more forgiving version of the dynamic difficulty system that climbs ranks at a slower rate. Since the release of Resident Evil 4, nearly every Resident Evil game has used a variant of this adaptive difficulty scale, including the title's 2023 remake. Resident Evil 4 has definitely got to be the poster child for dynamic difficulty settings because if you didn't know about the system already existing, you probably wouldn't know based on the gameplay. It's definitely the perfect hybrid type of difficulty experience because it really does create an organic 
feeling to gameplay. When you're in the heat of the moment, you never notice one more or one less enemy on screen, and the way that they slowly advance towards you is always intimidating regardless of if they're actually attacking you or not. And like I said, it's a gradual increase and decrease in difficulty, so you never really notice the change while playing. And while it's not the focus of this video, the atmosphere of that game definitely goes a long way in helping to augment the experience. Dynamic difficulty isn't always a hidden feature. Clover Studios' God Hand transforms dynamic difficulty into a brutal risk-reward mechanic. Throughout the cult classic beat-em-up, you manage an always visible difficulty gauge which will quote, level up to the next difficulty rank when filled. Much like the dynamic difficulty of Resident Evil 4, God Hand's difficulty ranking rises and falls based on your performance in combat, moving on a scale that ranges from level 1 to a fourth rank called level die. However, God Hand doesn't use this dynamic difficulty to make you comfortable. The game rewards you with better rewards for defeating enemies at higher levels, which might encourage you to reach the level die whenever possible. The catch is that God Hand is often considered to be one of the hardest games of all time, and even the lower levels provide a punishing reminder of its reputation. If the challenge ever becomes too much, you can grovel at your enemy's feet to drop the difficulty. As with Resident Evil 4, God Hand features two other difficulty options, an easy mode that removes the third and fourth difficulty levels, and a hard mode which permanently locks the difficulty gauge at level die. While these mechanics are usually tailored to single player experiences, Left 4 Dead and its sequel utilize a dynamic difficulty system that can adapt to a four-player team. Rather than determining your skill based on a simple ranking system, Left 4 Dead's dynamic difficulty is carried out by the Director, an artificial intelligence that spawns items and enemies based on your team's performance. If your team is low on health or ammo, the director will provide more items and throw out smaller hordes of zombies. However, if you're breezing through the level, it will respond with scarcer supplies and fiercer foes. Despite its absence in most modern releases, dynamic difficulty has continued to improve thanks to developers finding new and exciting ways for games to adapt around players. Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain features a unique dynamic difficulty system that doesn't always make the game tougher, but constantly forces you to adopt new strategies. When you rely too much on long-range headshots, enemy soldiers will begin wearing helmets and setting up snipers. If you prefer confronting these guards head-on, they'll eventually come prepared with shotguns and riot shields. Even the in-game time of day matters, as completing missions at night will lead enemies to equipping flashlights and night vision goggles. Metal Gear Solid V is remarkable for the countless options that you have for completing objectives, but its creative approach to dynamic difficulty ensures that you can never depend on a single tactic for too long. Similar games often give you plenty of tools with little reason to use them, but Metal Gear Solid V cleverly uses its dynamic difficulty to encourage variety and experimentation in a way few other games can match. While I'm sure that all, if not most of us, are well aware of Left 4 Dead's amazing gameplay and director AI, I've gotta say that Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain is a personal favorite of mine. Hideo Kojima is well known for his multi-process storytelling, and this use of game difficulty to alter the world is definitely peak Kojima game design. Metal Gear Solid V's variable difficulty makes the game world feel alive and leads to a custom-tailored experience for every single player, and while many games will claim this, no two playthroughs are exactly the same in MGS5. Despite its proven effectiveness, many games still neglect dynamic difficulty adjustments in favor of traditional difficulty settings, or none at all. While this may sound like a problem, there are a few reasons why most game developers are sticking with these old school methods. Some games are arguably worse because of their dynamic difficulty. Max Payne will gradually lower your health and worsen your aim as the game progresses unless you die repeatedly in a short period of time. This ends up feeling like a punishment for playing well and makes your guns woefully unreliable during later levels unless you exploit the dynamic difficulty by intentionally dying. The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion is another example of poorly designed dynamic difficulty. Though for very different reasons, rather than weakening the player, Oblivion introduced level scaling, a mechanic that strengthens NPCs and introduces tougher creatures as you level up. Although this sounds like a decent idea and would later be perfected in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Oblivion's steep difficulty curve discourages you from leveling or forming a character build that isn't strictly focused on combat. This unintended restriction works against the freedom of the game's open world design and often results in players restarting a playthrough rather than adapting to the challenge. Even multiplayer games games aren't safe from bad dynamic difficulty. Mario Kart 8 determines which items you can receive from an item box based on your current placement in the race. If you're lagging behind or fall into last place, you'll get better items than the racers in the lead. However, many players exploit this mechanic by deliberately staying in last place before using the game's best items during the final lap to enter first place at the last second. 
Thankfully, this problem was eventually addressed in a later patch. Aside from the ways that dynamic difficulty can detract from a game, there's no denying that implementing preset standard difficulty options is easier and sometimes more effective. Popular action series like Halo and Call of Duty provide players with a small selection of static difficulty settings. While these options won't be as carefully tuned to your preferences as the dynamic difficulty system, they still succeed at captivating both hardcore and casual players. Compare that with Resident Evil 4, which required the developers at Capcom to design and playtest 10 different difficulty settings as well as program a dynamic system that evaluates player performance and subtly tweaks the game's balancing. All this needs to be implemented without the player ever noticing or creating an opportunity for them to exploit the mechanic. Dynamic difficulty is absurdly complicated, and it's a miracle when this system actually works. Although it's incredibly impressive when a game pulls off dynamic difficulty, I don't blame other developers for sticking with static difficulty options. While there are definitely several strong points made in this article, and I definitely feel like there's some merit to the argument, there's one particular reason why I prefer to play static difficulty games above all else. Nowadays, when I'm playing a game, I'm typically recording the playthrough in order to use the footage in a review or a theory video later on. And for the most part, when reviewing a game, I find that it's most helpful to play the game on the normal difficulty setting, as that seems to be the most balanced difficulty setting that the developer intends the average player to play through. I have no way of knowing this for sure, but it feels like most games are designed around the normal difficulty setting, with the difficulty being scaled up or down for the other game modes. So like I said, from a game review sort of point of view, I feel like the normal difficulty is probably the most pragmatic option. That being said, on my second or third playthrough, I normally like to go with the more difficult options because it seems to make combat more snappy and engaging. Personally, I've found that when enemies are at their most aggressive settings, it pushes you to learn the game's mechanics and utilize all the tools at your disposal in order to overcome challenges. It's really a personal flavor type thing, but honestly I feel like adding to the challenge also adds to the enjoyment. Of course that's not to say that there's no enjoyment to be gained out of more casual experiences. I certainly love a more laid back scenario of RimWorld, but I would be lying if I were to say that my favorite titles aren't known for their difficulty, namely the Souls series as well as Kenshi. At the end of the day, I honestly feel like it's personally healthy for gamers to overcome their skill issues and get good. Even if it takes you a million tries or two weeks to get through a single boss, it's still worth trying because of the sense of accomplishment that you feel on the other side of it. But I'm not some difficulty purist or here to shame anybody for enjoying a more casual experience. To tell you the truth, games are supposed to be fun, and for me that means more challenge, but that might not be the same for everybody else. Even with its faults, dynamic difficulty adjustment is still one of the best ways to handle video game difficulty. When it works as intended, dynamic difficulty fine tunes a game to fit your taste, delivering experiences that fit the creator's vision without alienating players. No matter your skill level, dynamic difficulty allows any game to provide the perfect amount of challenge. It's also been used to ensure every playthrough feels different, bringing plenty of variety and infinite replayability to your favorite games. While it's clear why dynamic difficulty is still rarely seen in games, I'm hoping more developers will give it a chance in the future. Me personally, while I'm okay with more developers exploring the options for dynamic difficulty, especially if it leads to more gems like Metal Gear Solid 5, I think there's one option that we haven't really explored at all when talking about this subject, and that is customizable difficulty. One of the more entertaining games that I've played recently has been Control Ultimate Edition, which offers you a much greater degree of, well, control over your in-game difficulty via the settings menu. While many of these settings are classically considered cheats, a lot of them are toggleable and also have a sliding scale allowing you to tweak them to your exact specifications. To tell you the truth, I feel like the customizable difficulty setting would allow both players and content creators to squeeze a lot more enjoyment out of these titles, and that's not counting games that you can mod, like Ken which allow you to tailor the exact sort of experience that you're looking for. But I think that's where I'm going to call this video today, guys. Thank you so much to everyone who has watched up to this point. And if you can, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the content I have coming up for you guys. Also, be sure to let me know your difficulty preferences down in the comments section below. I'm looking forward to hear from you guys, whether you're hardcore gamers or a more casual audience. But like I said, the most important thing is that you're enjoying these titles. So I'm going to get back to it. And as always... Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. And until next time, love you guys. Safe travels.